Hi, I'm Debbie Moore. I'd like to invite you to my home kitchen on Wednesday nights at 9 p.m. Watch WGSR where we're always cooking up something delicious. Even toast. Debbie Moore. Welcome to my home kitchen. Mamma mia, it's a pizza day. Pizza day. Pizza day. Camera guy loves pizza. Ah, uh, yes he does. So we're going to make homemade pizzas today. And I'm going to use my old friend the, um, uh, shoot. R2-D2. R2-D2. <laughs> yeah. Because I have one of the earlier versions uh -huh. of a bread machine. That's I've probably had this about 15 years maybe. Since Star Wars came out in 1977. Well, maybe not quite that far <laughs> back. But uh, I'm going to let this do my, my mixing and my kneading just because it saves a lot of effort and I've got one so we're going to use it. Well these things do need uh, knead dough very well. Saves a lot of tired wrists. You bet. And shoulders. So the first thing I need to do is, is oh, but before I go there, I want to thank Joanne and Eden who brought me this lovely package. Holiday I've party. already taken all this stuff out of it, but I want to show you what uh -huh, Joanne babe. brought. What's your bring? Salt and pepper. And I've got them out here so I can use them today. Loaded up, ready to go. Loaded up and ready to go. Those are grinders or just shakers? The pepper is a grinder. Oh, cool. Salt is a shaker. New pair of tongs. The nice ones. Metal. Yeah. A mini grater. Yeah, you were crying for one of those a week or so. Ago. I sure was because mine is such a mini that you have nothing to hold on to. That's right. What nice gift. And gifts. then... Oh, a cutting board, too. I guess she got tired of seeing mine slide <laughs> around all over the counter. Right. So thank you, Joanne. This is really, really nice. By the way, folks, keep those cards and letters and kitchen utensils coming. We yeah. love it. Yeah, great. Well, we Thanks. enjoy hearing from you yeah. and receiving our lovely goodies here. Yeah, we thanks, set this Joanne. off to the side. What a nice gift. Thanks, Joanne. All right, let's get started. We need to start with our yeast. Am I correct, camera guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're trying to uh, put this in the uh, order that the bread machine book says, put it, load the machine. I don't really know why it makes any difference since it all gets mixed up anyway. Yeah, I've never well, quite understood that myself. We're but the obedient type, so we'll follow the order. I understand. You know, I'll play with other recipes, but when it comes to baking, I tend to follow the rules. <laughs> so. And even though we're not actually baking in the bread machine, we are going to let it make this uh, pizza dough. See what happens. By the way, we bought this thing like we were talking about many years ago, and like many small kitchen appliances, it gets used for a while and then put away. And then gets put away. But I drug it out again a few months ago and started making some bread. And I thought, well, heck, this would be fun doing the pizza dough with it. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I don't know if we've ever guys, done we, this. Guys, we tend to experiment a lot here at my home kitchen. <laughs> if we have a disaster, <laughs> so be it. Right here, we've recorded so it for each. For eternity. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Okay. All right, yeast. And that next. was about a tablespoon of yeast yeah. or one pack. And by the way, I bought, I use the um, active dry yeast from Hodgkin's Meal because I use a lot of whole wheat flour. And this works on any kind of raising, uh, risings for food or bread. But this one is especially for whole wheat. That's what it says. Huh? So we'll see. Wonder what's different. Anything? Because my my pizza crust is basically a whole wheat. But now you're just putting in white right flour. Right now I'm putting in the one and a half cups of white flour. Okay. And the white flour just helps it leaven a little better. I don't think we've told them what kind of pizza we're making. We'll, we'll they'll find that out. This shortly. is a surprise. We'll let them know that in a little bit. Right now we just know we're making that dough. We're gonna do the dough first. Okay, let's get this. I don't have quite enough in there. There we go. How much uh, white flour? This is one, um, hmm, one and a half cups. One and a half cups. And yes, folks, I am using a recipe because this is, even though it's pizza crust, it is baking. And I don't mess around with formulas and chemistry. Unless you run out of something. 
And then I run out. <laughs> then you just have to wing it. And then I wing it. But then there are a lot of things. Maybe I should do a show sometime on the different things you can use to uh, compensate for something you don't have. Like if you have sweet milk and you need buttermilk and stuff like that. Mm. Maybe you could put some vinegar in it or something. Actually, I'd have to look it up again. I've forgotten. But that's okay. All right. White flour, one and a half cups. Mm -hmm. Let's get inside this stuff a little bit here. All right. Two cups of whole wheat flour go in next. And please buy, buy a good brand of whole wheat flour if you're going to use whole wheat flour. And hold on a oh, minute. Oh, we got a fire here. <laughs> okay, the fire's out. And it wasn't my fault this time. Uh, no, it wasn't. Uh, and I don't know if it's anybody's fault, really. But this, see, we have to use these bright lights in here. And uh, that one right there was pointed at that reflector. And the uh, reflector fell down and touched the light. And, well, woo, we've got a stinky, Ooh. burned plastic sort of mess oh, in here. It smells really bad. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> But it's just another adventure oh, in another my home, adventure. My home kitchen. Which yeah. is Green Acres. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. That's what happens when you make a TV show on a shoestring budget. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a couple of amateurs. <laughs> okay, there's one cup of whole wheat flour, and we need one more. Oh. Boy, am I making a mess. You make mess, I make fire. Mm. All right, so that's two cups of whole wheat flour, one and a half cups of all purpose flour already in there. Okay, so we got the yeast in, the two kinds of flour. Mm hmm. Woo! Now the uh, other dry ingredients, I guess, right? Right. Next is um, a teaspoon of white sugar. White sugar. Mm hmm. And then it's my home kitchen. There has to be herbs. So I'm actually going to put some herbs in my, my dough. Mmm. You got a fancy smanchy. Fancy smanchy. Keep your butter around again. What kind of herb are you putting in there? Alright, this one's basil. Basil. I don't want basil on a pizza. That's right. Some dried basil. You're going to put it in the dough. Interesting. Mm hmm. And then oregano. And I'm using, you know, just. I guess it would be about a teaspoon, but it's in the palm of my hand. I always like to just kind of smush it around a little bit to release the aromas. Yeah, I've seen you do that before. It works. Okay. All right. And then, black pepper. Out of Joanne's uh, pepper Out of meal. Joanne's pepper meal. Is it grinded? Mm-hmm. Sure is. The, the thing is taller, and I'm short. <laughs> I'm standing over here on tiptoes. Right. Get into R2D2's head. To get into R2D2's head. Right, I need a tablespoon of olive oil. Sounding rather Italian. Yeah, it's getting all Italian on us. And then I need a teaspoon of salt. And our water. And I'm going to have to cut the sink on a second, make sure I've got it warm enough. What champ we need our water at? Between 85 and 95 degrees. You don't want it too hot because it'll just burn out the yeast, but you need it warm to get the yeast started. Yeah, the yeast want to be warm and cuddly. Mm -hmm. Using one and a half cups, but here's my first cup. I'd like to see what temp I have it on. Want, this is an. I want to scald them, little baby yeast. Right, this is a instant read, and 
I'm already up to 103, 104 degrees, so I've got a little bit too warm here. Oh, okay. That'll work. Yeah, it's stopping on 105, so I'm okay. Right, there's one cup. And then I need a half a cup. Smelling the herbs finally taking over from the <laughs> the grossness of the plastic smell. All right, there's all of our ingredients. They're in. We're gonna close this up. Yeah, I got this put start. I got it on the right setting. Well, thank you. Camera guys playing grip today. So now all I've got to do is push start. Oh yeah, work it, baby, work it, and it's working. <laughs> so it's going to knead this dough, and uh, yes, it is. We'll come back and uh, start uh, the toppings. Can we do anything until that dough's ready? Well, yeah. I guess it's time now to tell folks what we're making. Oh yeah, let's let's reveal that to them. We are Before making. Before we do that, let's get that noise out of here and let it go off on its own. Okay. All right. Stand Bye. Okay. Bread machine's off, kneading the dough, and we tried to put it somewhere you can't. <laughs> doesn't make too much noise in the microphone. Though. That's right. Well, the first thing I want to do is get a little bit of olive oil going over here. And I've got, I'm lucky, I've got one of these uh, warmer uh, eyes on my stove. And I'm probably putting in there about a quarter of a cup of olive oil. And what I'm going to do is just uh, smash up, not chop them or anything, some cloves of garlic. Okay, have we told them what kind of pizza we're making yet? Still? Mm, it's still a secret. Okay. I got some uh, pizza trivia though. Uh, I want the viewers to think about, and then I'll uh, uh, see uh, test their expertise, if you will, and to end this show, we'll find out if they know the answers. Right. How many pizza restaurants, pizza parlors, are there in Reedsville? Okay. Everybody think about that. And well, I'll... now you're leaving out part of our audience here, though. By just no. Well, I know I said, but I just know the answer to this question. <laughs> Not asking questions I don't know the answer to. Your garlic went flying. Yeah, it did. How many pizza parlors are there in the region? See if you can think of all of them, and we'll talk about it at the end of the show. Okay, back to you, Chef Debbie. All right. What I've done is just, uh, you know, smushed it a little bit here. Because all I'm after is the flavor in my olive oil, because when I stretch my crust out and put it in my pizza pan, I'm not putting a sauce on it. This mm. is going to be my sauce. Oh, weird. Mm -hmm. So you're not chopping the garlic, you're just smashing it up? Just smushing it a little bit, just so it can... Uh, Skinning it and smashing. Yeah, just enough so it will release its flavor in my warm olive oil oh. over here. Garlic and warm olive oil. Mm -hmm. oh, that just sounds like a divine combination. <laughs> mm. Well, because this, this pizza sauce, uh, this pizza, does not have a red sauce on it. No red sauce. No red sauce. You sure this is even American? Yeah, this is a pizza. Sounds kind of unpatriotic to me. This is a pizza that camera guy and I used to get sometimes when we'd make it to Greensboro. Which doesn't happen anymore. Never happened much in the first place. That's right. Never happens anymore. Our job schedules have never allowed us to do much of anything but like that. But actually, one of the pizza restaurants in Reesville now makes a version of this. Except that they're no longer open. <laughs> Boy, I just got shocking news. What? I uh, don't say it, but mm -hmm. okay. Well, I'll have to investigate this further off camera here, because yeah, before you make your uh, final whoa statement. All right, now that's my garlic over there. So the next step. So now it's time I have to tell you what I'm doing. Okay, this is doing? called. A rosemary roast pizza. Rosemary roast pizza. And I'm actually using a piece of uh, 
tenderloin left over from last night's dinner that I'm going to saute over here. And I bet you're going to use this rosemary you got in the oh, yeah. glass here. We, we seem to have rosemary in a lot of dishes around here. We happen to like rosemary. Yeah, we do when we go home. And so that was beef tenderloin we had last night? Mm-hmm. I meant to ask you what that was because it really was delicious. I thought it was some kind of steak. Thing about it. Well, is it steak? It is steak. Okay. It's just from the tenderloin part of the steak. Oh, like a filet mignon. It was so good. But then I thought, well, this don't have any bacon on it. It can't be filet mignon. Well, believe it or not, the filet mignon and, and the tenderloin are pretty much all the same. Yeah, kind of in the that. same neighborhood. It sure did taste good. That was a nice dinner we had last night. Had our family over. Kind of uh, our <laughs> Christmas cousin. Baby Jack. <laughs> Baby Jack was here. Yes, Baby Jack was here, and look what Baby Jack's granddad got for Christmas. <laughs> look at that. Right. Baby Jack in his tub. He loves his tub. Loves the tub. Okay. And right. Baby Jack is starting to walk now. <laughs> and it is so funny. All right. I see onions in the works here. I'm going to saute some onion to um, go with the rosemary and the meat. And I kind of want to caramelize it because it will bring out the sweetness in the onion when I do that. i got to get smart and get me a bowl over here put all my mess in every time I cook. Just going to probably should have left it in rings, but that's okay. I find it easier to eat if it's chopped up a little bit. <laughs> okay. Need a little olive oil in this pan for sauteing. That's another ingredient we use a lot in this house. Yeah. Every cook does. So now we want to saute our onions, kind of caramelize them. Break them apart a little bit too. To get lots of flavor. By the way, when you see me scraping, I'm using the back of my knife, not the blade side. Tear up your knives real quick using the other side. We'll Maybe put, your hand, too. Maybe your hand, too. A little salt. A little freshly ground black pepper, thanks to Joanne. need to saute this up a little bit and while they're starting I'll come back over here and we'll cut up our meat and this like I said was just a piece of the tenderloin from last night beef tenderloin beef ten yeah beef tenderloin yeah so we're putting we're having a roast beef pizza is what we're having here aren't pretty we? much yeah are you doing slicing that pretty thin there yeah because I'm going to saute it a little bit. Oh, you're going to pre-cook it for it? Pre-cook it just a little bit. Okay. Because pizzas don't stay in the oven very long. That silver skin that always gives you a fit on a piece of meat. I hear that uh, bread machine straining in the back room. That's a, a good bit, so sign. That means that dough is getting pretty thick. Mm-hmm. Sure does. And when it's uh, finished kneading... We're going to let it rise yeah. probably about a half an hour. You know, let, let it rise till it doubles in size, which won't take long. And uh, we're just letting the dough machine go no further than the first kneading, and then we're going to stop it from baking and rising and all that. All right, because we, I really don't, I don't like my bread machine for much other than what it's doing right now, which is doing the 
what I consider the hard work. I prefer to let it work and then I bake it in my oven. <laughs> Does a nice job of kneading this stuff. Really does. It does an excellent a, job. Makes a great dough ball, even though it's a that old R two D two model. <laughs> Need a dough ball. It'll make one. That's all right. Ah, here my onions sizzling. I better take a look at those real quick. Mm, I'm smelling them. Boy, they're so much nicer than burned plastic. <laughs> mm. Yeah, we're finally getting that aroma out of here. Yeah, it's gradually moving on out. Okay. <clears throat> there we go. This should be a very good pizza. And I'm I'm actually making this one up as I go, other than the other uh, than dough. <laughs> well, we're kind of imitating a little bit something we've had before. We know was good. And that's one of my favorite things to do, too, is to, to have something like that and then try to recreate it for myself. I've had some successes, and I've had some very big flops. Let's hope today's a success. <laughs> all right. There's my meat all cooked up, or cut up. Way. You hear the bread machine running? I think I heard it stop. Is it stopped? I can't tell for sure. I've got <laughs> headphones on. Is it going? No. No, it is not. Okay, folks, it's time to for us to pause here and let me go fetch the uh, completed kneaded dough ball. Be right back. <laughs> Okay, R2-D2 is back. Yeah. Let's see what he's accomplished. <clears throat> By the way, he needed for 20 minutes. About, about that. Okay, I need to um, grease my bowl here. My bowl and I'm there. using olive oil. You can spray it. You can use whatever. I just want to carry on with that theme of the, of the olive oil that we've been using. And we happen to like the flavor. I mean, I literally will just dip my bread in it. Just move your uh, salt and pepper stuff there. Let me see, yeah. Thank Is that you. better? Yep. Okay, open him okay. up and see what we got. Remember how to eat? Yeah, there you go. There we go. Well, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> Flop oh, out. man, the herbs smell wonderful in there. Okay, yeah. Be sure you pull a little <laughs> agitator out. Yep, I'm getting it. Yeah, we have a, one, the old round type. I think most of them are square, make a rectangular. Like the ones that. I've seen now seem to. Okay. Well, and that thing's about the size of uh, uh, one and a half softballs. Maybe. Yeah, and I made the mistake. You're supposed to grease your hands, mm. too. Yeah, I can see you... where that would have been a good idea. <laughs> before you go in there. And another thing is, you know, go ahead and, and roll it around in the bowl so that a little bit of oil gets all over it. That's a pretty big bowl, uh, and we're going we're gonna to cover it and set it aside until it doubles in size. Yes, right? and this makes probably two large pizzas. Yeah, we'll have some left thinking. over for something yeah. else. Maybe I'll make You're breadsticks missing. or something. Sorry. But I like to use cheesecloth type stuff. So we're putting the dough ball aside and just at room temperature, although we're well above room temperature, the uh, wood stove is off and running again and the temp outside has gone to 62 degrees. 60 degrees. <laughs> okay, we've uh, set aside our dough ball to rise. We're guessing about 30 minutes to double in size. Huh? Yep. So now what do we do? Well, I'm just going to put a little salt, a little pepper on my beef here and we're going to just put it over here in the pan with the onions that I've cooked and just saute it up a little bit. Now I like my, my beef medium rare so I'm not going to do a lot of cooking to it. Just want to get it mainly started. Yeah, and it's going into the oven. How long is it going to be in the oven? Not long. Not long. Mm -mm. Yeah. Pizza generally takes maybe 15 minutes if it takes that. Okay. 
this over here, make sure it's hot and sizzling. You're putting it in with the onions? Yep. Just to saute it off just a little bit. And the warm olive oil and garlic still going in still the back. Still going in the back. It'll just sit here until I'm ready. Okay. Matter of fact, I'm going to cut it down now that it's gotten heated a little bit. It'll just let it sit there. Uh -huh. The longer it sits there with the heat on it, and that's a really low heat because it's my warmer uh, eye, the more infusion, and that's what we're trying to do, is infuse the garlic into the olive oil. Well, what's the matter? So that's what we're actually doing. Do you remember when you told me that I might, I might have such strong feelings about a boy that it might be hard for me to decide what's right to do? Yes, I remember. But why? Well, it was something like that tonight with Jeff. You know, I like him an awful lot, and we... We have such fun at dances. But tonight, the, the feeling between us kept getting stronger and stronger. On our way home, we stopped and parked. And then things seemed to happen. Do we, Neely? Oh, it was so close. Suddenly, I realized what we were about to do. I asked Jeff to take me home. I guess he felt ashamed, too. He said he was sorry that it was his fault. Do you think it was his fault? Oh, Mother, I don't know what to think. I'm so mixed up. Okay, through the magic of TV, voila. Ta -da, look at that dough ball. Isn't that beautiful? Well, this is double in size, all right. Oh, yeah. Now it's soccer ball size. Soccer ball size. Okay. I want to put just a little bit of flour on my marble top here. And this is called bench flour. Bench flour. Bench flour. And what it does, it just kind of keeps the dough from sticking to the, to the marble. To the bench. Mm -hmm. All right. Because back in the day when some of these terms were uh, initiated, I guess what I'm looking for, uh, they actually worked on wooden benches. All right, come on. Out of there. Come on, baby. There it goes. Woohoo! There we go. And see, nothing stuck to my bowl. All right, you got some flour on your hands or something? Getting ready to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> going to be sticking to you in a minute. Yeah. Okay, nice big dough ball. I'm going to cut it in half. Okay, I see the pizza pan's made an appearance. Mm-hmm. Actually, I'm going to cut it. This is a large, large pizza pan. I think I'm going to do two-thirds. Mm-hmm. And I'm doing it with the sharpest tool I have in the house. Sharpest and the most dangerous. <laughs> All right, and this other little ball I'm just going to put back here for the time being. We'll make a dumpling out of it. A dumpling? <laughs> yeah. I don't know about a dumpling, but um, I'm going gonna, gonna to do some of the work like this, just kind of pushing it down. And yes, that wind is crazy yeah, today. Yeah, I was something started up and was a motor was running, but no, it's the wind. It's the wind. Time. It is so bad that my three foot tall, very heavy, Butterfly house, I walked out there and the wind had blown it over, crashed it off of a table, and a piece of my homemade pottery had l literally picked it up and smashed it to the ground. Smash it, gone. Gone. It's gone. So you're massaging the dough, stretching it Stretching out. it to do a little of the work before I get it in the pan. And I'm going to um, pre-bake my crust just a little bit because we like crunchy but chewy at the same time. And that's one of the ways you can do it. Best of both worlds. Best of both worlds. 
I see you preheated your oven. What you got going over there? 450. 450. Mm -hmm. Pizzas cook at a pretty high temperature. I wonder if I can do this. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Oh, oh, oh. This, sh folks, may be where the show goes. That was bad. Yeah, it all got, turns ugly. Uh oh. Well, I got some stretch. Oh, I thought you were going to throw it up in the air. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm not that wild and crazy. <laughs> When you were a kid, did your mom buy the little Chef Boyardee pizza kits? I was thinking about that the, uh, last night after we had decided we were going to do pizza today. And um, I was the kid on the block that everybody wanted to come to my house because I would use that Chef Boyardee kit. And my mom always had extra sausage or some hamburger meat or something around. And I would just really make up some pizza. So everybody liked to come to my house and eat them. Yeah, you'd get a... Uh a flour mix, you'd get a little can of tomato sauce. And a little pack of pepperoni. Uh, and your cheese. Uh, everything came in the box. Oh, you got the pepperoni in there too? Oh yeah, you know. got everything. Yeah. Well, you could buy the pepperoni or you could buy the cheese. You had a choice. Uh, see, that was a that was pretty rare in my house. It was a little bit above our financial abilities. Oh yeah, right. So, <laughs> I didn't get Chef RD pizza in a box too often. I suppose they still make those things. But I've not seen them. We ought to make a, a pizza kit one time just, <laughs> just, just for, for the fun of it. Yeah, nostalgia. I guess frozen pizzas have kind of supplanted the They took over box the pizza. box pizza. Uh -huh. Next time you're in the grocery store, check that out and get us a, a Chef RD pizza in the box. Now you've uh, oiled your... Uh, I've oiled my pizza pan and, and I'm just putting just a little bit of uh, cornmeal on here. Cornmeal? Cornmeal. Mm -hmm. Cornmeal's gritty, so it helps the crust, keeps it from sticking to the pan. There we go. And you greased up with olive oil. Greased it up with some olive oil. Okay, let's see you get it on that pan now. No problem. Oh, 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 you made that look... Easy. If you make your dough right, and that was the hard part about the Chef Boyardee crusts. It was, I guess, pretty much cheapo ingredients, and they were tough to make to get your crust to do what I'm doing right here. Boy, we loved them as a kid, though. Oh, boy, did we ever. We prayed for snow days, <laughs> and that's what we'd do. We'd all go out sleigh riding in the uh, late afternoon, and then we'd come in at somebody's house, Sometimes mine, sometimes somebody else's, but I was always the one in the kitchen making the pizzas. So you, you got to make the pizza in the box. Oh yeah, I was the I was the pizza maker. So that's where you got your formal chef training then. That's, I guess so. That's where you got your credentials. That okay. and <laughs> that and home economics. And high school home economics. Because that was my favorite class. I love to cook and I love to sew. You sew. know, some of our view, viewers have been asking. Where did Chef Debbie get her credentials? You know, how did she come about being called a chef rather than a fry cook? So it turns out it's because of that Chef Boy RD pizza in a box stuff. Yep, that was probably some of the first food I ever cooked. And your home ec training, that your formal home ec training. Absolutely. Right. Loved that class. Okay, viewers, now you know. Okay, I've got my crust. Oh, that really looks good. Dang, you did a good job. And I seem to remember the problem with a Chef Boy RD crust, at least when I ever worked with them, they were always breaking through. They were breaking <laughs> yeah. through and they were gooey. And yeah, I wasn't very good at it. I'm sure Chef Debbie. No, Chef Debbie had a hard time with those <laughs> oh, crusts. Oh, you did too. too. Oh, you yeah. Did. I'm telling you, it was the ingredients they used from their well, flour I'm sure, ingredients. I'm sure they gave you the uh, minimal amount necessary to make a Crust. Very, very minimal amount. <laughs> right. hey, you had to, to keep it cheap. Keep it cheap. Because I think back then you could get the kit for like 59 cents yeah. or something yeah. like that. And I'm going back to the 60s, folks. Now, if you really wanted to make special, you would uh, cook some sausage and put it on top of right. it. Right. That's why when we were at my house, my, like I said, Dad always, uh, Dad and his brothers, would kill pigs and uh, cow. Well, we didn't do much with the cattle, but... Stick the pig on there? No, but they made their own sausage. So there was almost always some sausage at my house. 
And granted, these days I'd probably use Italian sausage. Now you got me thinking about something. Because <laughs> you know what's over in that fridge. Yes, I do. Yes, some I do. Homemade sausage, several pounds of Yeah, it. from our friend Brett Rapestraw. He kills his own pigs and helps us every year with sausage. So, all right, I need to get this in the oven and I'm going to cook it for about um, five minutes just to let it uh, get crispy before I put the rest of the ingredients on it. Stay with me. We'll be right back with my home kitchen. Okay, while our uh, pizza crust is in the oven, doing a little pre-cooking, I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of the ingredients ready. I need some fresh rosemary. You keeping up with the time? Yeah, kind of just eyeballing it here, but it'll be about five minutes. We're not getting it brown, are we? No. Okay. Starting the cooking. Rosemary time. Rosemary time. And dangerous knife time. <laughs> oh yeah, me and my dangerous knives. That's another thing, you know, the sharper the knife, actually the less chance of getting hurt. But if, if it does cut you. <laughs> but if it does cut you, it really does it's cut you. cut deep. <laughs> but, um... Uh, the trick is actually using the knife in the way it's supposed to be used, and that's how I got cut that day, folks. I was not using it the way it was supposed to be used. You didn't used. read the instruction manual. Well, I knew what to do. I just was being obstinate. Negligent. Negligent. Gross negligence. Gross negligence is exactly what I did. So, I always try to use your tools in the proper way. Like this. <laughs> Just gonna chop it a little bit to get some, release some flavor. Okay, thanks, Joanne. This is working great. <laughs> no, it's Joanne's cutting board, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Just tell you a little piece of plastic. It looks like it came out of a shirt box or something. <laughs> Well, actually, the, the plastic one I do enjoy sometimes because I can throw it in the dishwasher. Right. Which well, means yeah, I, yeah, I sanitize sense. it really well. All right, you got a ball of cheese there. This is a uh, mo fresh mozzarella okay. that we're going to put on our pizza. Mm -hmm. Mozzarella ball. A mozzarella ball. And there's a difference between shredded mozzarella and fresh mozzarella. It has to do with aging. Cutting it into fairly thin slices. So I'm going to cover our pizza with it. And because I wasn't paying attention, and true, probably wasn't at the grocery store, I am going to use a little bit of cream cheese because what I'd really like to have is mascarpone. So we actually don't have the best ingredients today, do we? No. Sure don't. You're going to use uh, cream cheese instead of mascarpone cheese right. like you should have. Right, or mascarpone. Yeah. And mascarpone is very similar to cream cheese. Mm -hmm. The difference being uh, mascarpone has a little more tang to it. Mm -hmm. And mascarpone is a pretty standard cheese in just about every pizza. It's nothing unusual about mascarpone being in pizza. Unfortunately, we don't have, have any it. of it. <laughs> I heard an oven beep over there. Uh, it's finally come up to the highest temperature that I had it set for. And I see uh, hopefully steam and not smoke coming out of the oven. <laughs> Woohoo! Let's go here first before we do much else. I failed to do one of the biggest things you need to do when you're baking. Uh oh. Oh, nothing's too badly. I, I see a tuma. There's a tuma <laughs> on the side of that pizza. You're supposed to prick this thing a little bit, and I forgot to do that, so I'll just do that now. Ooh, that smells wonderful. Come on, baby, go down. <laughs> you got this giant. <laughs> Let some of my steam come out of my pizza. Blisters on your tumor, <laughs> on your tumor, on your pizza. <laughs> there we go. Now, all right, that part has cooked enough for is right it, now. Is that warm? Nobody was supposed to see that. I saw it. Well, I know you did. You, you see everything. Camera saw it too. OK. 
Okay, let's. All right. Now you're doing the substitute for the correct cheese, mascarpone, mm -hmm. by using cream. Well, cheese. so this is this is one of those little hints. You know, there's always a way around if you don't have exactly what you needed. So today it will be. And if we didn't want, live on the other side of the globe, we would actually go get some. Go more. get some. <laughs> but, exactly. Uh, that would cost about $8 worth of gas to go get <laughs> $4 worth of cheese. Exactly. Exactly. Let's see if I can find my pastry brush. And it'd probably be nightfall by the time we completed the journey. <laughs> And I have the neatest pastry brush now, or brush. This is silicone, so if you're out working on your grill and need to baste, you're not going to melt it. Hmm. Plus, it's so easy. I throw it in the dishwasher. Any oils or anything like that that get in it will come out. Silicone pastry brush. Mm -hmm. Looks just like a paint brush, actually. Yep, but it's silicone. Okay, it's time for... Oh boy, does that smell wonderful. Okay, what's in that pot? This is my garlic infused olive oil. It's been warming, okay. Mm -hmm. It's just been sitting back there on warm. For quite a while. Mm -hmm. Okie dokie, what are you going to do with that? I am going to brush this pizza, or crust, with the oil. liberally. What about the garlic? You're not going to throw that away, are you? Oh, we'll probably use that for something else. I wouldn't be averse to using it in this pizza. Well, we could probably put some in it. Actually, I should have roasted some garlic for the pizza. That's really, really good. But this might work. As you can see, folks, I'm putting a lot of this on here. Because this is your sauce. Because we're not using bread. We're not using a tomato-based sauce? Mm -mm. The smell coming up, or the aroma, I should say, coming up from this dough is just wonderful. Speaking of uh, last-minute improvisation, don't we have some uh, marinated tomatoes? I've got them going in, too. They're, oh, they're going in. You're ahead of me. I'm ahead of you. Any mushrooms going to find their way into this, maybe? No, nah, because they no. should have been sautéed, so sorry. Oops. Oops. Obviously, with pizza, and that's one of the reasons for its popularity, it's so versatile. Very versatile. All right, everybody still thinking about those uh, pizza restaurants? And That's Rainbow, right. How many they are and what they are? <laughs> All right, on goes the rosemary. That's my coffee pot beeping. We have so many things that in beep. this kitchen that beep, it drives me insane. <laughs> you never know. The refrigerator beeps, the stove beeps, <laughs> the microwave beeps, the coffee pot beeps. And if a cell phone is in here on charge, which it normally is, it often beeps. <laughs> yeah. Working for uh, WGSR, I am tethered to a cell phone. All right. Well, now what's going on? I am putting on, I've already put the rosemary on. Yep, yep. So now I'm just putting on a little of the cream cheese. A little cream cheese, rosemary, olive oil. Mm-hmm. Yummy. This, this is going to be good. <laughs> if the smell of this uh, dough is of any consequence, this is going to be very well, now, good. Now, what form does uh, mascarpone come in? Is it coming? What is it? comes in a, t a tub. A tub. Uh huh. Kind of like. Um, a tub of cream cheese? Well, that or. Um, can't think what I. Uh, oh, I can't think of the name of the other cheese I'm thinking of. But. Yeah, it comes in a. a like. Uh, it's a tub, and it's the size, usually, of. Um, I like sour cream is the type of container. Gosh, Chef Debbie, it's amazing the stuff you learn from a Chef Boy RD pizza kit. <laughs> Good golly. You did a lot of reading, didn't you? I've always done a lot of reading. <laughs> or did you get that knowledge from Home Ec? No, Home Ec was pretty much straightforward. Yeah, it was just uh, don't break your eggs all in the same bowl. Do it one at a time, right? Kind of. <laughs> Straightforward cooking. You have a four-year degree in that, don't you? Egg breaking? <laughs> Egg breaking, yes. <laughs> That's my fancy degree. <laughs> <laughs>
And then even with all your training, sometimes you violate that rule. Yeah. <laughs> Depends on how big a hurry I'm in sometimes. Okay, the next layer. Next layer. Is going to be. Get the stuff off my fingers. <laughs> There's our crazy kitty. Yowing. I think the next layer is going to be our beef. And onions. Your sauteed beef and sauteed onions. Sauteed onions. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking this is going to be a good pizza. I'm thinking I'm getting hungry. Me too. Boy, it's going to be nice to have a glass of wine with that. Oh, yeah. Wine is so good with pizza. You need a red wine or a white Zinfandel is really good with pizza. Yeah. <clears throat> because of the fruitiness in the white Zin. Yeah. Wine snobs kind of look down on white Zinfandel, but it's great, great with pizza. It's really good with Chinese food. And hamburgers. And hamburgers, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or hot dogs. Hot, yeah, you're right. Okay. Sorry y'all are looking at the bottom of this frying pan. Oh, it's a nice spot. Okay. Next, we want to put on our sun-dried tomatoes. And I'm lucky I found some that are already all chopped up for me. Oh, so you've got some uh, oil marinated mm -hmm. sun-dried chopped tomatoes. tomatoes. Chopped sun-dried tomatoes marinated in oil. Yep. Got that out of a bottle. Yeah, I see the bottle right over yeah, here. Yeah, I got the bottle sitting over there. Yeah, mm -hmm. sitting right there. And with this recipe I just did for the dough, I mean, you can do so many things with it. Like I said, this leftover, I'm probably going to turn into some breadsticks. <clears throat> Not going for that dumpling idea? I don't think so. <laughs> I'm not much into dumplings. Never have been. I just wanted one. Just one. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, one big one. Okay, the next thing I want to do is uh, a mozzarella. Resistance. We are going to. Hmm, went from Italian to French. <laughs> <laughs> is the freshly grated Parmesan. And as you can see, it is the right kind. See the label? I mean, the, the rind. I'm going to use a mini grater. I haven't opened it, so I'm going to use. This one will work, but I like that mini grater, especially for the. Um, Freshly grated nutmegs and stuff like that that I do. Oh yeah, yummy, 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 yummy. Look good, camera guy? <laughs> yeah, I'm sitting here in a trance. <laughs> Standing here in a trance. Yeah. Oh, am I going to get any of my garlic on there? Or? Maybe. Uh, maybe. You sound reluctant. Yeah, I'll put you some garlic on here. So I'm just taking a little more of the oil that's infused with this garlic and just drizzling it over my cheese and stuff. I'm just getting hungry. Yeah. Working on yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Alright. Let's me see. see. Gotta cook a little more. I think I can wait. 
All right, I'm going to fix you a special spot right here with your garlic. <laughs> What's wrong? You afraid of garlic? You no, some I'm, kind of vampires? No, I love garlic. But uh, it tends to have a lingering effect for me sometimes. It's part of the attraction. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the long lingering side effects. Mm hmm. All right. Do I, I have. Oh, I need more pepper. To top this off, we have to freshly grind some black pepper on top. And now, my oven is very hot. 450 hot. 450 hot. We're probably going to be in the oven about 10 to 12 minutes. So, we'll you guys take a break. And we'll be right back and we'll eat some pizza. Is your piece de resistance? Ready now? I think it is. Oh. Let's take a look. Let's rock. Oh. Oh, yeah. Is it beautiful? It's gorgeous. Bring it on out where we can see it. Oh, look at that pie. That pizza pie. Hold it up a little bit if you can with your Ugg glove there. Well, let me get one more. <clears throat> there you go. Tilt it a little more. If I do, the juices are going to run oh, out. Oh, okay. Is it juicy? They're very juicy. Your right. olive oils and oh. your cheeses. That baby is beautiful. Isn't that gorgeous? Ooh, yum. I better put the oven glove on the other hand <laughs> to cut this baby. All right, I happen to have a pizza cutter. If you don't, you can use a knife. Let's see what we got here. Oh, listen to that crunch. Yeah, it's a crunching. cutting it later. I just needed to cut enough to get a slice out. All right, get a slice. Mmm, mm-hmm. Yummy. Look at that. Mmm. There you go. Rosemary roast pizza. Rosemary roast pizza. Boy, that's going to be delicious. Can't wait. All right. Okay, folks. Our time is uh, running out here. Today we made a rosemary roast pizza. We started, we made our own dough, we made our own uh, pizza crust, and then just added our ingredients. But go, you know, get, get happy with this. Make your own dough and then add any toppings you want to. You can use a red sauce, the olive oil, in, or the garlic infused olive oil like I did. Doesn't matter. Just have fun with it. So, for my unconnected friends, again, 779 Almond Road, Reedsville, North Carolina. My home kitchen. My home kitchen. Those of you who are connected, it's myhomekitchen.tv. You can find the recipes, you can find clips of shows, you can find all kinds of things there. So, until I see you again next time, I'm Debbie Moore, and this is my home kitchen. And that's your pizza pie. And that's my pizza pie. And let's eat it because it's smelling <laughs> fantastic. Bye. Okay, it looks like uh, we were uh, thought we were wrong about something. We thought it was the end of the show, but it's not. It uh, we're back uh, to first of all give you a report on this pizza. This was absolutely incredible. Yeah, you can kind of see we enjoyed it we enjoyed there. It very much. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm going to say that's the best pizza I've ever had. Well, let me tell you. I told you about mascarpone while we were shooting. Yeah. Never mind. Cream cheese was fantastic. Mm, darn right. So when I fix this recipe to put up on the website, myhomekitchen.tv, it will include cream cheese, not mascarpone. Yeah, don't bother looking for the mascarpone. Don't bother. Forget it. The cream cheese was don't, excellent. Yeah. The only thing you should change from what we did today <laughs> is what she The was it? garlic. Uh -huh. It was incredible. Throw more in there so that you can have garlic pieces all over your pizza because it was incredible. Yeah, she went back, she learned her lesson, went uh -huh. back, and took all those hunks of chunks of garlic that had been cooking in that oil. Oh, clothing, wonderful. All over it, and it just jacked it on up there. So go with the garlic, go, go with, with the, the garlic. cheese. 
It was wonderful. And the only other thing I'd say is it needed just a touch more salt. And that's because we were using the cream cheese versus the mascarpone. That's, that's true. Which would probably yeah. have a little more salt in yeah. it. I just put a little on top of it. That's what we did. We just added a little salt to it. But this was absolutely incredible. Oh, boy, it sure was. Boy, mm -mm, that was a good one. And the one other thing I forgot is the answer to the trivia question. How many pizza parlors are there in Rockingham County? Reedsville. Excuse me, Reedsville. Reedsville. I don't know how many there are. All right, are camera right. guy, how many are there? Are they in Reedsville? There are seven. Now, I'm going to go down the line, and you're going to correct me when I get to the end, I understand. Uh -huh. Okay, here they are. Two on Turner Drive, one of them right beside our bookstore, which is Domino's Pizza, okay? Right. That's one. Directly across the street, across the street from the bookstore in Domino's is Carmela's. Correct. Two. And then the Magic Pizza Mile. The Magic Pizza Mile is Freeway Drive. Here we go. Starting on the north end, I guess it is. Pizza Station. Yep. Okay. Zoe's. Uh-huh. Yep. Papa John's. Uh-huh. Pizza Hut. Uh-huh. That's four. And five, Tom Tom's Pizza Gourmet in Ashcroft. What, what? That would make five, plus the two on turn drive would be set. You're shaking your head. What's the story? Tom Tom's is closed. Are you sure about that? That's what I've been told, and I've been by there a couple of times, and looks like there's a for rent sign in front of that building. Well, I, I'm not going to say that, because I don't know for a fact. And, and, uh, and I ran into one of the guys that ran the place, and he said it was locked up. Oh, well. <laughs> okay, we've gone <laughs> from seven down to six, but I bet you we've still got more pizza parlors in reasonable per capita than they do in New York City and Little Italy. I, the, I don't know about six that. Six or seven, heck yeah, on per capita basis. Oh, per capita basis, yeah. okay. okay. There's a, practically a piece of parlor in reasonable for every man, every other man, woman, and child. It's unreal. It's at least six, and uh, it was seven until right. recently. And there's probably some others that we don't even know about. Yeah, some other people making pizza. Okay, well, that's the part we forgot. The answer to a trivia question and let you know to don't worry about mascarpone. Mascarpone and add the garlic. Don't, don't just add raw garlic. Add the garlic uh -huh. that comes when you infuse your garlic with your olive oh, oil. Yeah. That was incredible. Yeah, don't leave that out. Don't leave that out. Okay, we're, we're really gone this time. Okay, My Home Kitchen, myhomekitchen.tv, every Wednesday night, 9 o'clock, WGSR, Star 39. Oh, what's the matter, dear? Do you remember when you told me that I might... I might have such strong feelings about a boy that it might be hard for me to decide what's right to do? Yes, I remember, but... Why? Well, it was something like that tonight with Jeff. You know, I like him an awful lot, and we... We have such fun at dances. But tonight... The feeling between us kept getting stronger and stronger. On our way home, we stopped and parked. And then things seemed to happen. Do we, Neely? Well, it was so close. Suddenly, I realized what we were about to do. I asked Jeff to take me home. I guess he felt ashamed, too said he was sorry that it was his fault. Do you think it was his fault? Oh, Mother, I don't know what to think. I'm so mixed up. Debbie Moore. I'd like to invite you to my home kitchen on Wednesday nights at 9 p.m. I'm here with a few of my hmm, favorite ingredients. Watch WGSR where we're always cooking up something delicious.